the PHQ-9 is a helpful tool to diagnose depression. And you can start off with the PHQ-2. And the PHQ-2 reads, over the past two weeks, how often have you have been bothered by any of the following problems? The first question lists, is there little interest or pleasure in doing things? And you can rate it from zero to not, which is not at all, one or several days, two, which is more than half the days, or three, nearly every day. The second question asks, are you feeling down, depressed, or hopeless? And again, that's the same rating scale. These are basically the first two questions that need to be asked if someone presents with depression or someone may think someone is depressed. And the cutoff score basically to evaluate if someone really meets a criteria for clinical depression is three. So if they score three or greater, then it would be important to follow up with the full PHQ-9, which has seven more questions which will help to clarify the severity of the depression and help clarify how to treat it. The full PHQ-9 looks something like this, where it has the first two questions at the top, little interest or pleasure in doing things, are you feeling down, depressed, or hopeless? And then it goes on to the other questions. Third one is trouble falling or staying asleep or sleeping too much, feeling tired or having little energy, poor appetite or overeating, feeling bad about yourself or that you are a failure or have let yourself or your family down, which is also known as feeling guilt or guilty, trouble concentrating or on things such as reading the newspaper or watching television, moving or speaking so slowly that other people could have noticed, or the opposite, being so fidgety or restless that you have been moving around a lot more than than usual. This is also called psychomotor agitation or psychomotor retardation. And lastly, it's thoughts that you would be better off dead or of hurting yourself, and sometimes uh, thoughts of suicide can also happen, which would be in this section. The total score on this is 27, and typically the clinician can add up the scores, and a score that's 20 or higher is considered severe depression. And you could take a look at this breakdown for how it breaks down in the different categories, but generally speaking, moderate depression or higher could benefit or it's suggested to have some sort of treatment, whether it's uh, medications, therapy, or both. But tip, definitely for severe depression, you need to have uh, medications. And with the medications, there can be treatment focused on the symptoms someone is having. For example, if someone has problems with sleep and has poor appetite, then Remeron or Mirtazapine could be a good choice because often it can help people fall asleep. It can help increase appetite. If someone presents with trouble concentrating, then you could do medications such as Wellbutrin, which sometimes can help with concentration and focus. But you can also consider other mental health conditions like anxiety or ADD or ADHD, which can also have trouble concentrating as one of its symptoms. So the patients should also be evaluated for those conditions. If someone is feeling tired or having low energy, they should also be screened for anxiety because that can be a symptom of anxiety. Maybe they can also be evaluated for other conditions like low testosterone or sleep apnea. Um, or if it is from depression, then Wellbutrin could also be a good option because sometimes that can be a little bit activating and help people to have more motivation to do things.